The original script did have a number of characters in it, like uh, Professor Peach, but the Peach that I envisaged um, was going to be corrupted in a much milder way than, and also perhaps a little bit more uh, sensitive than, than the character that, that was eventually uh, drawn for um, Many Hell. I didn't create that character. I don't really know where it came from. But the big fat woman sort of really, uh, his, his lust for big fat women, although funny, really appalled me and was one of the things that kind of turned me off the film uh, when I first saw it. They were sort of what you might call opportunistic casting. There were times when you could just pop a little cameo into a picture um, because there's so much going on with the, the whole robbery at the end of the picture, towards the end of the picture. And um, when these people, as they became available, we just grabbed them and plumped them straight into the movie. My original Peach was, was a sort of daft old brush who was just obsessed with toy trains and they were going to somehow get to him by offering him some very rare old uh, choo-choo that he could play with in the attic. So this desire for fat women uh, I, was, was completely different from that concept. Well, I particularly got on very well with Benny Hill um, because my folks had been in variety and he was mad about variety, he was mad about old time stuff and he actually remembered them as a double act uh, in, in the 40s because he'd, he'd seen them in Southampton and things like that. And we, we used to play a game which was called Bill Matter because variety artists always had Bill Matter. For instance, you get Albert Modley, the Lancashire lad, um, Hilda Baker, she knows, you know. And he pulled me up on that. He said that was not her original bill matter. Her original bill matter was Hilda Baker, 1,001% pure. And so we used to, we used to snap these, uh, these catchphrases to and fro. And uh, he, was, he was a lovely fellow, but he, 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 yes, he did wander off on his own. Always had a notebook out, writing things down. I remember very little of Benny Hill, except he kept on disappearing. Very private man. And he would disappear and, you know, if he wasn't required for a couple of days, he'd take a plane somewhere. But I, I do remember going out to do uh, dinner with him on about three occasions. Um, and he always carried a little notebook, which was always put with a pen, side of the thing. And he'd, he loved to order. We'd always we'd sit with Benny. There was about four of us that went out. And we'd sit with Benny and... Uh, he would order in Italian, as near to Italian as he could get, because Benny spoke so many languages, I mean, it was incredible. But, uh, and he, he then would go into English to try and get the, the waiter to speak to him in English, and the waiter would do his level best, and he, he would be chatting away in the, in the best English he could discover. But he'd look at Benny, and he's writing everything down that the guy is saying to him, you know. Right. And two years later, we'd be watching a Benny Hill show and you'd suddenly see an Italian waiter and you'd listen to the dialogue and you'd say, that's a... I mean, Hank, that's the guy that served us in that restaurant in, in Turin. Benny, in spite of the, 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 the risque sort of stuff that he shot for television, he was very, very nervous of women. He was... To me, I had a wonderful dancer a fat lady who was a wonderful dancer in from Rome called Dore Dorita. She was marvellous. And um, when we came to push her through the door, I said, Benny, get your face into her bottom. Push it, get your face then. He was terrified. He was absolutely terrified. Well, I love Benny Hill. And I was surprised later to hear that there was a lot of worry about... Uh, the joke of the fat ladies and so on. It's, I always thought it was having a black sense of humour. I always thought it was terribly funny. I mean, I just think it's a brilliant comedian and tremendous fun. But then you could say the same about Fred Emney, I mean, who uh, unfortunately um, seemed to get cut out of me. We did one or two quite funny scenes with him blundering around, you know, covered in flags and things, which uh, apparently, well, finished on the cutting room floor. But, I mean, we had two great comedians there, and I think it's interesting that I think the fantasy action took over so uh, heavily 
but something had to go. And I think, unfortunately, we lost bits of Benny and, and Fred Emney, which is, a, I'm sorry we don't see more of them.